Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, everyone. How is everybody? Um, well, there's one person here. How are you? Oh, hello. I have spoken to someone this morning. I don't know what's going on with my voice. Um, hello. Yes, I decided that I was going to do a quick live today. I have had a very nice week off and I have been busy down in the sewing room, cutting out all of the things and then sewing up a bunch of things. And then I have managed to break my overlocker again, which sucks. Um, so I have messaged the guy that fixed it and serviced it for me. And he is going to come and pick it up again on Tuesday. And he has it for a week and then we'll bring it back. And that means that T-shirt week is not going to happen next week. That was my plan. I was going to get all my knit projects finished. I've got three done. I've got three pinned together, my shrugs. And it was the first of the shrugs that something went wrong. I broke a needle and it just... I changed the needle and it just won't sew again. It's, all the thread keeps getting bunched up. So, um, yeah, he's going to come pick it up on Tuesday and fix it for me so that I can um, get back to sewing up all of the stuff, which just means that T-shirt week is going to be delayed probably by a couple of weeks because um next week I need to well this week coming I need to f sew up the woven projects I've got next to me here one of those is my gala dinner dress I had to switch plans because the fabric that I did want to use that that um blue and pink flower one unfortunately I only had three and a half meters. I thought I bought five, but I hadn't. I bought three and a half. So I didn't have enough fabric for the dress that I wanted to make. And I really want to make that dress because it fits me very snugly at the moment, but it fits me. And it also looks good when I've lost a little bit more weight. So um, I have gone through many of my fabrics in my stash. I even got some of the Anaconda and Thesis lawns out to have a look at. And it turns out I've only got three and a half meters of the blue one. Um, and I've got five meters of the buttermilk one. So um, I decided that I didn't want to do the buttermilk one in this dress. And I've gone for a viscose linen that I bought ages ago. And I had had in this stash here, but I also think it works with these, the Anaconda thesis, because it's basically ivory, green and yellow flowers on it. And I had enough of that to, to cut out the Vogue dress and also the little cropped tie front shirt from the uh, Gertie Butterick pattern. So uh, I need to make those two things up. I need to make up another retreat bag because last time I had one that was in pieces so that people could see what the insides of the bag was supposed to look like. So I had the uh, lining fully assembled and I had the bag outer fully assembled but I hadn't put them together because that way I could show people um, what we were aiming for with certain points in the instructions and so I need to make that up and then the retreat is um, next it's, it's uh, two weeks today so t-shirt week by the time I get my overlock back um, I won't have time for t-shirt week because I will be full on um, retreat prep. I'm going to see them tomorrow to finalise the menus and sort out how we're going to get Nimue and Yvonne from the um, ferry to Fox Hills. Fox Hills very kindly offered to go and pick her and Yvonne up, but so is mum. But we're gonna I'm gonna talk to them tomorrow and just sort of work out which which one of those is gonna be best. Um and I will let you know, Nimoy, because I can see that you're here. So Nimoy is here, hello. Uh Darcy's here, good morning, good morning. Elena says, hello, lovely Shana Peeps, hello. Nimoy says, Oh no, overlocker woes are not fun. I know, I can't believe it. I made three things and the shrugs, oh my gosh, I was gonna get those done in like two hours tops they are so quick I'd forgotten how quick they were I even when I got them when I got the pattern out to cut it out I was like 
I'm sure I'm missing a piece, but I wasn't. It's a really clever pattern. And they're going to look so pretty. And I've ended up with um, a fairly decent chunk of all of them left. In fact, the yellow one is wider. So I don't know if I can get it out of a meter. And I've looked again because there's, I really want the chocolate brown one from Pound Fabrics, but I went back onto Minerva to have a look at the colours that they have, and they've got so many colours. But it is £30 a metre there, so I need to be, like, really selective about what and if I buy anything from there. And um, thankfully with Minerva, I believe you can buy 10 centimetre increments, so I could get like 1.1 meters if that's what I need. And I've got the leftovers from this one so I can measure and see exactly how much I need because you do have to cut the uh, shawl piece on the, on the bias. But I'm thinking that because it is a knit fabric, I might be able to not cut it on the bias. Um, and just uh, count on the innate stretch of the fabric to make it work. So that's what I'm thinking. Nimoy okay. says, I'm at work today, but bought my tracing stuff to prep for PJ and pizza night. Nice. Uh, Nimoy says, how much would you hate me if I say I'm thinking about adding a zipper to the top of the bag? I think it worked. I think I've worked out how. I'll just bring it all the stuff. Uh, <laughs> you would probably want to do it the same way that the Harith zipper gets done because there is a top. Um, Mum's been using her bag and loves it and has already like had compliments on hers. So there is a um uh like a uh a top facing piece. So you'd want to make like a zipper placket that would get sewn into that top facing piece. So you can totally do it. Um not difficult at all. Um I'm not sure that it's overly necessary, but I, I would I would think it might get a little annoying having that flap and then having to unzip two closure methods. But yeah, it's totally totally doable. Um, totally doable. You probably want to buy zipper by the meter because I haven't included a zipper cap in the um hardware kit obviously so we do the closure method that erica uses for the harias um or the zip finishing method that erica uses for the harias which only needs a rivet and you've got rivets um included in your kit so totally doable i think it would be redundant and might be annoying but i do know how you how you like your zippers on your bag so totally doable Um, Elena says, I need a new skirt. All of my patterns need to, too much adjustment at the moment. So I will make a quick pattern by wrapping myself in kitchen plastic to get the perfect pattern for yoke and waistband. Nice. I still, I haven't tried that method yet, but I kind of want to. Darcy says, it's a struggle to not buy fabric. I just spent so much on plants. Oof, nice. What plants did you get? Mum went to the, um, to the to the nursery yesterday and bought lots of veggie plants and veggie seeds. Sorry, I've just interfaced the facings for the um, Rigel bomber jacket, and I am now just trimming off the excess interfacing. I'm getting on. I was getting on so well with my Make Nine as well. I like t I've ticked two of my Make Nine off, and when I was like doing the shrug, it was going to be the third one, and then this was going to be the fourth, and then T-shirt week was going to be the fifth and the sixth, and um, yeah, I know, I know I can sew knits on my machine, 
but I don't want to because I like the inside of my stuff to look as nice as the outside of my stuff. And I prefer the finish that I get with my overlocker on knit projects. So I'm going to wait um, because I would rather do it in a way that I like it rather than just persevere and do it in a way that's not my favourite just so that I can say that I've done the thing. So I think what I'm going to do is actually cut out, because I was very tempted, to, I was in a cutting out mode this week. I was very tempted to cut out the 7974 from this dress. So I think I'm going to get that done. The stripe, I need to retrace the pattern. So the other thing I was thinking is this fabric I got from um, Hellasees. I got six meters of it. So I'm thinking an 8177 and a 5951 with this because I've got enough fabric to do both. And I think that would be really nice. So a strappy sundress, long strappy sundress. And then the 1940s long sleeved dress as well from the same fabric. I think that's going to be quite nice. And I may have accidentally fallen into the Lamazi website and bought fabric. And they have, um, they, they had the, where did I put it? <laughs> Where did I put it? There it is. The um the the stuff that I bought from the Lamazi last time. I'm gonna end up resorting out my fabrics and making a mess of them. So this fabric that I bought from them last time that I thought I'd bought three meters, but it the stock had adjusted before I'd pressed buy and I bought 1.5 meters. They have this back in stock, so I bought another 1.5 meters. So I'm gonna have three meters total, which means I can do the 5951, which is what I wanted to do with this in the first place. And it's gonna match my nails. <laughs> I went I went to the salon yesterday and um, they were meant to be peach, but they've ended up day glow orange, but I quite like them. And I'm gonna go for day glow yellow next week, uh, next time I get them done um, for the retreat, because they will then match the dress that I wanna make very nicely. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited that they had some more of this and um, then they also had another fabric in. Let's see, I bought the last of it, I bought the six meters that they had left. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing, make two dresses out of it because I am a crazy person. I very, because Car if Caroline, um, no not Caroline, sorry, not Caroline, Catherine, if Catherine sees this, they had a navy blue version of the fabric that she sent me and I'm very tempted um, by that but I decided to go for the uh, yellowy version. Let me, let me just scroll through and show you exactly what I have purchased because I have no chill and yeah. Also, I love how all of this set has come out, but it is very, very muted and very autumnal colours. And I did that because it was the fabric that I had and I really like the um, the stretch content of the fabric, um, the, the, t the tan taupey coloured fabric. Uh, trying to find a good picture of this fabric. Here we go. Yes, I got that one. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And again, it's probably more autumnal than it is spring because it's a mustardy yellow, but it's going to go really well with this collection that you know. Um, oh. yeah. I trimmed, I've trimmed everything off of that. Right, let's put this into sections. Of what we need to do so that I can work in sections. Okay, so I'm going to do the lining first, I think. Um, yes, I should not have spent that money at La Mazzi. I, yeah, I got overexcited when I saw that they had more of that fabric that I had um, only bought the one and a half meters of and I was just like, oh yeah, I need that. And then 
when I looked at this yellowy floral that I've been eyeing up for a while as well, and they only had six meters left, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I need that too. And then this is the the navy floral. So it's the navy version of the one that Catherine sent me, which was um, much more kind of, it was a white background with the same kind of flowers all over it. They've got nine and a half meters of that one left, and it's 10 pounds per meter. And I very nearly bought five meters of that one as well, but I really, really don't don't need them and need to probably behave and be a little bit more like, yeah, let's let's behave. Um because you know, I have a lot of fabric. But when they had when they had that um orange, purple, white, slodgy one, I I I just I couldn't resist it when they had it last time and the fact that I only ended up with a meter and a half of it I was sad about and then this time around it's just like I don't have to be sad I can have the thing that I want because they have more of it in stock so I bought it and it's going to be the dress that I've got in my head and it's going to be awesome and then yeah I needed I needed to um I needed to <laughs> I needed to buy something else so I got free shipping so I did <laughs> um uh, Jojo says, good morning all, happy Sunday. Um, Wilf, my overlooker, needs to see a doctor too. He's been out of action for ages. Oh no. Darcy says, I have to borrow a clamp to repair my box for my 99k. Jessica says, hello all, love your jumper, Sean. Thank you. Philip DeFranco merch. Uh, Elena says, plus, it's perfect fun to have with a kid. They can do something fun and stupid without the adults getting mad. Love it. Darcy says, I've got a fig tree, some night blooming jasmine, lemongrass, and some hellebores. Nice. I love jasmine. Uh, Nimoy says, I do have matching infinity zip, and I was, that was the lines I was thinking along. Mum raised me with pickpocket paranoia due to her job. The thing with that is, I don't think you're going to end up, not well, anyway, I don't think you'll end up closing this. I don't think I, I don't think you can make the um, the zip really go much further. So you will still have these bits open, um, these little side bits. So these these will be open. I don't think you'd be able to put a zip in all the way across the top and have it look good. I don't think. Maybe. 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 Why are you not shutting? Um, yeah. So you're still going to end up with the open parts, but it would be the flap and then the zip. So, yeah. <sighs> Darcy says, Elena, that does sound fun. Jojo says, mm, I love Jasmine. He talks. Elena says to Darcy, it is fun. <laughs> Darcy says, I've tried to explain the process to my husband and he just looks moderately <laughs> terrified. <laughs> Elena says, you're not crazy. You just know what you like and want. Uh, Darcy says, also, oh, also, I bought some catnip and some watermelon seeds. Nice. Mum and dad ac accidentally grew a watermelon when they were out in Saudi. They would had they had watermelon and they just kind of, I think they gave the, um, the sum to the dog and sort of like chucked it and she went and buried it in one of the, the cause they had some flower beds around their, their um, garden. And yeah, so the dog went and buried it and then um, watermelons uh, just popped up and were like, they were like, oh, okay. And um, yeah, so watermelons happened and they were very delicious. But yes, just suddenly, oh, watermelon. Um, I think I was, so yeah, the sets that I've made back there, um, the French Terry, the patterned French Terriers I got from the Lily and Mimi closing down sale, and I had very small amounts of both of them, so I had to be, get creative with what I was making, um, which is why I've gone for the pieces that I've gone for. And then, um... The, um, the brown taupey colour is a ponty that I get from the fabric room and it works really well for those ch uh, jugging bottoms. But it is it is a very muted palette. I will thoroughly admit that. I like it. I do like it very much, but it is very muted. 
um, and I think I want something a little brighter. And they do one in sea foam and turquoise. And I have made the the other jogging bottoms I've made from the turquoise one are still going strong, although they are bubbled to crap. Um, so I'm kind of thinking I might want to remake those. And I might get myself the sea foam one as well because I think it's really pretty and it's a very nice bright spring colour and I think that probably make me happier. Uh, so, yes. Let's see what's... Yeah. I think the Rigel Bomber jacket is a one centimetre seam allowance. But I'm just going to grab the pattern and check because I don't want to sew the whole thing with the incorrect seam allowance. That would be annoying. Seam allowance one centimeter. I remembered correctly. So this is the Misusu stereo sweater. So I did this with my labyrinth panel but I had very little of this one which I'm so sad about I ordered a meter and I only got half a meter so I've gone for the stripes on the top of the sleeves and then the front and the back and then the the facing and that was I've got some scraps left but tiny little scraps um so that's the Masusu stereo sweater and this time around the, the I love my labyrinth jumper but I'm I don't like how it sits and this time around I added in elastic and it's not super tight to my waist elastic but it has cinched it in as you can see quite a lot to the point where I'm thinking I might go and unpick a little bit of the um, labyrinth jumper and put some elastic in and then re-sew it because I really like how this looks so there's that one and this stone French terry I got from um, Lily and Mimi as well because I thought it would go really nicely with this and then this is the 8145 which there is a sew along for and it's mushrooms and again, this was one of those ones where it was just like, I don't need this, but it's so, so cute. And um, I got it and I've made this jumper with it, which goes very well with the jogging bottoms. And this is the fabric that I used in the 8145 sew along. So I've got like a solid one of this. And now I have a patterned one. Again, very cute. And it matches the jogging bottoms, which I did put the bias binding stripe down the side for like the look tuxedo stripe so these fit lovely and are really really comfy so yeah and then I bought down loads more hangers for all my shrugs because I was totally convinced that yesterday I was going to get my shrugs done in like two hours like I say and uh, no no I did not so never mind they're in a pile they're, they're all cut out they are pinned together and I will get to them in a couple of weeks uh, but yeah I still have this to do and then like I said I've got a couple of uh, trying to point woven projects that I can do and also the bag so I've got lots of stuff I can do this month it's just not the month I was hoping for and um, <laughs> Lynn bless her was like oh, she's like I know you so fast but even you that's a lot to ask for in, in one month and I'm like no no I can do it I've already finished three projects today and I'm just about to finish four tomorrow thinking I'd get the Rigel bomber jacket and those shrugs done yesterday and it was just like mm -hmm. when um yeah when the machine stopped working I was just like I could sew the Rigel bomber jacket and then I was just like you know what I'm annoyed <laughs> no this is not how my holiday is supposed to be going so um yeah. <laughs> never mind Jojo says never mind is your mum fagin <laughs> Darcy says that's bright and cheerful um behaving is not as much fun but it is good for us yes Caroline says happy Sunday all been married 40 years today how did that happen congratulations Nimue says to Jojo she worked in a bank for 
for wealthy clients and on Mondays had to process the loss debit cards for the careless shoppers. Oh no. Um, and Nimue says that yellow fabric is so pretty in summary. I know it's going to go so perfectly in with this. I'm really excited about it. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to pair it with the snake prints at all. I don't think that's going to go, but it's going to go with all like the, the blending things. It's going to go really well with all of those. Like the Navy one would have gone really well with the Navy stuff as well. So yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Darcy says volunteer watermelon is a lovely thing. Michelle says, morning lovelies, good morning. Uh, Darcy says, congratulations to Caroline. And Caroline says, thank you to Darcy. Vanessa says, good morning, good morning. Jojo says to Nimue, wealthy folk aren't always known for being sensible or streetways, are they? And she also says, congratulations to Caroline. Darcy says, wealthy folks who aren't paying attention are the easiest marks. And Nimue says to Jojo, no, not at all. Twirling in front of a mirror with a bag open on the ground off to the side and such nonsense. <laughs> And Jojo says, uh, Nimoy, good grief. <laughs> and Nimoy says, uh, so much for bringing all my tracing stuff. I thought I forgot my pattern weights. Oh, well, lots of stuff and books around the place. I was going to say, you can definitely um, jerry rig some pattern weights. Anka says, hello, everyone. Hello. And Caroline says, uh, thank you to Jojo. Right, actual sewing, 26 minutes into the waffle. Who ha would have thunk it? <laughs> but... Like I say, I really want to get these done so I can start working on the woven pieces. I think I've picked, like it's a linen viscose, so it's a slightly, probably not quite like evening attire as the original fabric I picked. And now I've got to think of something to do with that original fabric because I don't think an eve dress is going to work because I tend to cut my eve dresses on the cross grain. And this one, the print is not directional, but it's obviously like an up and down print. It's not one that's going to look great cut on the cross grain. There's some that I've done it with and it's worked fine, but I don't I think this is one of them. So now I've got to try and work out what to do with three and a half meters. And I think I remember that I bought three and a half meters because that's all they had. Because usually I buy three meters or five. Like three and a half is like a I'm taking whatever you've got left amount in my um, kind of vocabulary, as it were. So, yeah. I'm a bit annoyed, but never mind. Never mind. Um, Jojo says, ooh, that dark green you're sewing is delicious. Yeah. So this was the lining of my niece's tartan wool coat. And it's actually also the lining of the other two Rigel Bomber jackets that I've made, the sleeve lining, because it's slippery. It's that moire um, wood grain kind of print. This is a polyester. I got it from Minerva.com years ago, and they don't have any more of it because when I did the um, sew along for the Rigel Bomber jacket or for the lining the Rigel Bomber jacket, um, I did, as I say, use this stuff as well. And unfortunately, I couldn't link to it because they no longer had it. But it is very pretty. And then the floof, because I'm lining the body of this in the floof, same as the other Rigel Bomber jackets, um, was from Guthrie and Garney. And I bought one and a half meters of it. And it's, it's lined the three Rigel Bomber jackets. Um, and I bought three and a half meters of it thinking I was going to make a like Sheridan sweater or something this is from one of the very first knitting and stitching shows that I went to and I um I could never make up my mind if I wanted the floofy side inside or outside because it would be way more fun having it outside because you could see it was a floofy jumper but it would be much more pleasant to wear if the floof was against your skin and then it was just boring sweatshirting on the other side I was just like oh I don't know and um, and then yeah now lining works really well 
as lining. I'm all caught up in the chat. That's good. Because we both we know I can't sew and chat at the same time. Or at least I struggle with that. But yeah. Fluffy lining, slippery sleeves, all good. Um right. So that one goes to that one. That one goes to that one. To remember to leave a gap in one of my sleeves to turn everything through. So I have had a very nice week off and as you can tell I've been down in the sewing room and doing lots of cutting out and actual sewing and very much enjoyed that. The thing that I haven't done is pick the camera up once so there wasn't a Patreon waffle. I did film a little bit at the end of last week, but that was um, after the Star Swap video went up. So I was not in a very happy headspace. Uh, so yeah, I looked at it and it was just like, it, was, it, was, it wasn't whiny, but I'd already talked about it all with you guys um, on the Hangout. You know, I, w I went into a little bit more depth than the Patreon, what was going to be the Patreon waffle, but it was just like, I've already spoken about this and talked to you guys about this. And so I'm just repeating myself. And if I hadn't have tried to split last week up into two, then I would have included it in the Patreon waffle. But like I say, I spoke to you guys about it on the Sunday last week. So it just seemed a little redundant. Um, so yeah, I didn't put anything out on Patreon this week, but I do have a couple of videos for Patreon planned for this week, one of which is going to be the Patreon waffle, and then it's going to be a catch up on the sew-alongs that I've got, you guys have voted for. So um, there's, there's a bunch of sew-alongs that are outstanding that I'm going to do and I'm going to get to, but there is also uh, some of the more recent ones, like the, um, the Sicily slip dress video. I am gonna try that one, but I don't think I'm actually gonna end up liking the Sicily slip dress. So I'm thinking I wanna swap over to a pattern that Alex sent me, um, which is a vintage bias cut slip dress, but it's more fitted, let me show you. So I was gonna see what you guys thought about that one I think I've shown you this a couple of times now but I kind of I don't think I would mind wearing that as an everyday dress and it seems a little bit more kind of bra friendly as well so I'm thinking that I'm gonna possibly swap out the Sicily slip dress for that one because I have a lot of silks in my stash that were bought with a bias cut dress in mind um and some of them are those Dior silks that were really expensive. And I've got a Dolce & Gabbana um, silk up there. There's a couple of Dolce & Gabbana silks as well. Um, and obviously, I want to make a dress I'm going to love with them. I'm, I'm happy to try the Sicily slip dress, but I just don't think it's going to be one that I love. And I think as well, bias cut slip dresses... Um, it might push me slightly outside of my comfort zone unless I was feeling my super best self, <laughs> which we know I'm not at the moment. Um, but yeah, so there's that one. I have found in my stash some hot pink viscos um, that I think I have more than a meter of. So Lynn's idea for the 9076 out of the emerald. Cobra Corsage Viscose with hot pink piping. Uh, yeah, uh, Lynn came up with the idea of doing a tiered and gathered skirt with that bodice with piping, which, oh, come on. Oh, you can't break as well. This foot pedal. It's a little temperamental, which is not the most fun, but never mind. 
um yeah and then Lynn Lynn was like oh yeah that would that would um that that bodice with the teared and gathered skirt would look amazing and I was just like yes it would but I don't have very much of the hot pink I was going to use for the piping but then I've discovered from a previous dress that I've made that I think I will actually have enough because I'm probably going to need about 20 meters of piping if I do the tiered and gathered skirt for that one so yeah that one and then the last vote the dress um that I'm gonna do as like um with sheer sleeves it's a bow dress which I cannot remember the number off of the top of my head but that one won and I have plans for that one as well for what fabric I want to use for that one so I'm going to do a video talking to the Patreon peeps about that. It'll be for the five and um, over five dollar tier and up Patreon peeps because that's the voting privileges tier. Um, five, five, ten, fifteen dollar tier um, get voting privilege is. Words are hard. Um, so yeah, it's going to be for those tiers that video. And there will be a couple of videos up this week. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do for Wednesday's video because it was going to be the shrugs video. And um, yeah, I can't make those. And I mean, I know I have some, but I thought it would be because the video idea was going to be along the lines of um, what to consider when you want to make a pattern from a fabric that the pattern doesn't recommend so you know I had a concept <laughs> and I was going to have examples because there's going to be like three chunky knits a fairly stable knit and then a very very stretchy viscose knit which is you know the ones that I've got and it could be like oh so this is the different things that happen with the different ones and um, things to consider when making a pattern like this and the changes that I've made to the pattern to make it work for for using these fabrics and uh, yeah I can't make them so I don't know what Wednesday's video is going to be anybody got any ideas of videos that they would like to see this Wednesday <laughs> Um, I can't do a sew along because the sew alongs that are outstanding are um, fairly in depth long sew alongs that need some kind of like, you know, like I could make the thing and film the thing in a day, but I also then need like at least a good 24 hours working time, not just time to actually edit the thing so yeah anyone got any ideas about what they would like to see because I don't know what to do. I wanted it to be a more practical video. One thing I was thinking about was facings, like different ways of doing facings and um, like the different finishing techniques that you can use for facings. But one of those, no, in fact, two of those I need the overlocker for. Mm, so not that one um because i want to do i mean you guys know i hate facings and we'll probably work out a way of fully fully lining the dress rather than um putting a facing in but there are at least one two three four five ways that i can think of to finish a facing um 
only two of which, well, technically one of which needs an overlocker. Um, and you, you don't really need an overlocker, so I suppose I could do it without an overlocker. And do the whole kind of like. Uh, do the whole um, how to finish your facing without having an overlocker. Uh, let's see, where did I get to with the chat? Darcy says, fluffy lining is good for the chilly place. Yes. Not maybe necessarily so much for Florida. Uh, Nimue says, I love that vintage slip. Me too. It was a very kind gift from Alex. And it's this, the right bust size for me as well, which is nice. Um, yeah, and I totally would wear it as a dress rather than like as an under under layer, I, I totally would. Um, let's see. Darcy says, the vintage slips are beautiful patterns in my opinion. Hot pink pipe piping sounds bright and cheerful. With, um, with emerald green cobalt corsage, it's going to be eye popping, that is for sure. Um, and I think a really good video for the, um, Uh, tutorial on piping. Although um, uh, Whitney's just come out with a piping tutorial as well, so mine's probably going to be very redundant. But I haven't watched hers, and it's not because I don't want to watch hers, and I will once I've done mine. But I don't want to be influenced um, by anything that she does. I want to do it like this is how I do my my piping kind of video, and then I will watch Whitney's and see if we have the same idea or if we have different ideas, because like on one hand, I'm like, oh, it'd be really cool to watch and just see if there's any tips or tricks that she's got that I haven't thought of. But then I don't want to be like, oh yeah, so I, I, I basically just watched Whitney's video and I'm now gonna completely rip off her, her, her techniques and tutorials. And I really like the way that I do mine. So we probably do it exactly the same way. We probably tackle it exactly the same way, but I just, you know, I thought, given that it's something that I've been banging on about doing for a while, it probably would be better to not watch hers and then do mine and then, you know, watch and see if we do have anything that we choose to do differently. Um, Jessica says PDF pattern organization. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Fox says morning peeps. Hello, Sean. I am late. We are sewing. I know I'm sewing in a, in a hangout. Who even, who even am I? Your butterfly dress is turning out so beautiful. I, where did you get that fabric from? Please don't tell me you've had it in your stash for years and it's no longer available because it's so pretty. Uh, Darcy says, second the PDF organizer for Wednesday. Anka says, you can do something about YouTube channel you like for sewing. I learned about Bianca from you and maybe you know more than uh, I, and I would love to hear, um, and I would love just like, I love her, just an idea. I always love the idea of doing um, those kinds of videos. And then I also get really anxious about those kinds of videos because I don't want to annoy anyone or miss anyone out. Um, like I'll openly talk about the channels I watch on these kinds of things, but like actually making a proper video about these are the channels that I love. It just, because there's so many and there's so many out there that I just don't get the chance to watch as often as I would like. And I tend to save up and, and binge watch their stuff in the sewing room on days like, you know, this afternoon. Once I've stopped hanging out with you guys, I'll stick somebody on in the background and just binge watch their content and things like that. Um, but I always get really anxious about making those videos because I, I don't want to offend anyone. 
by missing anyone out or but that's why I talk about it in like the live hangouts and stuff like that I mean I mention Bianca as often as I do because I religiously watch whatever she she makes I'm a patron of hers and um you know I have more than a few occasions tried to um follow along with some of her tutorial Star Trek dresses I'm looking at you um but yeah I'm a little I mm, I'd rather talk about it like this because that way we can have a back of and back and forth and um you know like drop different channels in the comment section here um and then people can be like oh yeah have you watched this one or have you seen this one have you seen that one it's like I watched Rachel's video the other day and she said she's just getting into rosary apparel and I was like how have you not been watching rosary apparel for years um and it was just one of those things that it never crossed her like YouTube view list and um so she's been binge watching a lot of her stuff and um yeah it's one of those things where it's just like you kind of think that channels are like people watch channels and it's a given but there are obviously channels out there that you don't come across and you're like oh you know like Emily Snee I love watching her channel I think um it's fascinating watching everything that she makes um and I think I came across her through Gunny Saxmas or Gunny Saxween one of those ones I really enjoy her channel um she doesn't post content very often uh Cat's Costumery I enjoy her channel. Um, obviously, the Stitchery, Morgan Donna, uh, Angela Clayton has just posted something on her, not a video, but an update on her um, Patreon, and she might be coming back to video making soon, which is exciting. Obviously, Bernadette Banner. Um, who else do I watch? Rosary Apparel, although I don't watch Rosary Apparel like religiously, I will watch ones of hers that interest me, like her Japanese um, diaries I watched. Uh, I do tend to watch some of her dressmaking ones but like she's just put out how to make the perfect bow this, yesterday she posts uploads on a on a Saturday and that one I'm not going to watch because I have zero interest in that um I think it was I always forget her name the girl from the stitchery she she um did a video talking about why going viral sucks and it was really interesting and she's right, because what you really want to do is build up like a core audience that are going to watch out anything that you put out, um, even if it is making a bow. And there's nothing to, there's nothing wrong with the video. I've not watched it. I have no idea. She might have come up with like this genius technique for making a bow. Um, but she does focus, Janelle does focus a lot on sort of like beginner sewists um, and easier projects and project and pattern hacking for looser fitting dresses I, I love her aesthetic and I love the fabrics that she chooses for her and she looks amazing and you know the whole channel's really well curated and thought out and she does it a really really good job but it's another one that not everything that she makes is my style choices or preferences and so there are certain videos that I will watch regardless and there are videos that I'm just like I'm, I can take it or leave it and, and that means that I'm not one of her core audience who will watch her make anything. But I'm one of her like dedicated audience who come back and watch the things that interest me. Um, but yeah, the girl from the stitchery, and I want to say her name begins with an L. And I'm just like, um, she was she was saying, you know, you, what you want is that core audience and then the dedicated audience that will watch the majority of things that you put out. But when you go viral, you end up with a big audience that were interested in the one thing that you talked about that happened to go viral. And then if you don't put out, you know, many cook, 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 cookie cutter versions of that video that they went, you went viral for and it piqued their interest, they won't necessarily watch whatever you put out because it's not you that they're invested in. It's the thing that they found your channel through that they want to know about which I thought was interesting, so, yeah. Uh, but PDF pattern organisation, I can definitely do that one. Uh, let's see. Elena says, yes, pattern organisation video and bright pink is always nice. Yeah, it's going to look really good with the emerald green. 
Um, Aaron says, good morning from Virginia. Good morning. Box says, the dress is almost done. Only hint left. The fabric is recent, but I checked and I could not find any more in stock. It's from Dry Stoffen. Dry, dry Stoffen. Ah, uh, I'm so sad because it's so pretty, but I don't need any more fabric. I've just bought more fabric. I don't need any more. Um... Anka says, I only discovered Rosary Apparel last year. That so surprises me because she was, F, but then I thus, again, that's what my feeds ended up like. So, yeah. Professor Purge says, good morning, lovelies. Remind me, what is Bianca's channel called? The Closet Historian. And then Jessica says, Closet Historian. Carol says, good morning from New York City. Sewing is happening. How exciting. I know, right? Uh, Jessica says, uh, Charlie from the Stitchery. Thank you, Charlie. Love that video about going viral. Charlie, why did I have an L name in my head? And then I said, Charlie's video rant, uh, viral rant was good. Yeah. Natalie says, Charlie is the Stitchery. Thank you. And Jojo says, it's Charlie from the Stitchery. Why did I have an L in my head? I don't know. Anka says, I only watch regularly your channel, Lifting Pins and Needles, and Lately Bianca. I tried last year to, to sew Janelle style, but realised it's not my jam, so I just watched her for the aesthetic and techniques. And Professor Pudge says, thanks to Jessica. Yeah, I think that's the thing, because there's a lot of channels out there that I really, really I mean, like, I have realised after trying to emulate Bianca a couple of times, I love her clothes on her. She looks amazing in her clothes. I don't. I look best in my fit and flare, flowery, loud, over accessorized. I don't even know if that's a word, but I like I like my belts. I do like my belts. Um, so that's the thing that I look best in. And uh, I feel comfortable in. And it might not necessarily the style swap video, like neither <laughs> neither of those girls, neither of those girls look good in any of the outfits. Um and you know, being told that I was not modern um, or fresh looking, it's like okay, fine. Um, yeah, so, so criticism of my style was hard to hear, but I genuinely do feel comfortable in my clothes. And I think you feeling comfortable and confident in your clothes then makes you look better in your clothes, regardless of what your style is, because. Confidence is the thing that is going to make you just feel better about yourself. So portray yourself with confidence. And, you know, it's like this self-fulfilling prophecy kind of thing. So, yeah, I absolutely love Bianca's wardrobe. It's amazing. I would 100% steal all of her floofier um, skirts, but she doesn't tend to make those anymore. And I'm not a fan of asymmetry. So all of her asymmetrical stuff that she makes, not for me, but I love it on her. So I watch her, I'm her core audience. I will watch whatever she puts out. Like I, I've deluded myself into thinking that I now need beaded beetle brooches. And she's just done one of a koi fish. And I'm just like, oh, it's so pretty. And I can see myself sitting down and making it, it not turning out as well as her, because again, she's really good at asymmetry, but making it look thought out and planned. Um, and yeah, never wearing the thing, never being happy with it. But I am going to make some flowers from her silk flower making tutorial. Um, I had planned it for my hat, but you know, I ran out of time. So I just went with the feathers. But my dressmaker's ball dress, I think I want to do some silk flowers on that one. Um, so I am going to use that part of it. But yeah, I, I have realized that I appreciate Bianca's style. I think it's amazing. She is so talented and has such a vivid imagination and stuff like that. It's not for me to wear, it's for me to appreciate. And it's the same with Rosary Apparel. I think her aesthetic of her channel is amazing. It's so well thought out. She has a very definite color palette, a very definite style. She sticks to it and it looks great on her. Her rosary jumper, the vintage knitting pattern, I've got that. And I really, really hope mum will knit that up for me. Um, and the 7974, obviously I love. And her version of that, I would 100% steal and take. Her more oversized empire not fitted things, I would take those and wear them and put a belt on with them because that would make me feel more comfortable. But again, it's like I can appreciate her aesthetic. I can watch it. I can enjoy it. 
but I would not dress like that. And the comment section of the Star Swap video, and a lot of the times in the comment section on some of my stuff, it's like I get a lot of you guys are just like, your style is completely opposite to mine, but I really enjoy watching you sew the things that you do because you look so good in them because you feel so good, you feel so good in them. So it's one of those things that just because you don't overly enjoy or would wear the things that somebody else is watching doesn't mean to say you're not going to enjoy their channel for, 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 for I mean, I'm preaching to the choir, you guys all know this. Um, but yeah, like um, this uh, Charlie from The Citry, I really, really love the hooded, big sleeved McCall's knit drum, uh, the purple and gray one that she made. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I really want to completely copy her. I have the pattern and I want to make those changes to it. I probably would actually never wear that um, because I have got myself into, I mean, I've spent this entire week in my PJs. <laughs> like literally I've spent the entire week and I am in my PJs now. I've, I've spent the entire week in my PJs and it's been lovely. Um, and it's not because I didn't want to wear pretty dresses and things like that, but it's not quite warm enough to me, for me to wear the pretty dresses without the tights and stuff on. And I just didn't want to put all the tights and like those, those kind of layers on. So I've just put PJs on for this week. It's been glorious. So um, having some of those dresses might have been a good thing, but I kind of think I've, I think I'm even out of love with my scuba dresses to the point where I'm thinking about asking my niece if she wants them, like all of them, I might keep one. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking about asking my niece if she wants my scuba dresses because I've just not really enjoyed wearing them. And I don't know if it's because like, you know, going through perimenopause, not menopause for the person that commented and let me know that I got that wrong. It's like, yeah, um, although, Honestly, how did you know? Um, but yeah, the hot flushes. <laughs> HRT is helping with the hot flushes. But I used to love my personal sauna suits because I was always a lizard and always cold. But I'm not always cold now. Um, and I like the ability to put on and take off layers. And I used to wear cardigans over those scuba dresses. But the scuba dresses were and are polyester sauna suits and when your temperature fluctuates as much as mine has been doing at the moment um they were not the most fun to have on at certain times of day so i'm thinking about maybe getting rid of those and it's not to say that i don't love the pattern because what i want to do is find some cotton jerseys in prints that i like and buy myself some cotton jerseys and make those dresses again but in cotton fabrics not polyester fabrics so i did have plans to make a bunch of um scuba crepe jackie dresses in plain colors and it's on my make nine and I don't think I'm going to do that because I just don't want to wear scuba fabric anymore because it just, I'm just, it's just uncomfortable to the, not just because of the, like the body temperatures that I'm going through at the moment, which is one of those things. Um, so I have got a couple of knits, cotton based knits there from uh, Stitch Fabrics that I'm going to make into jacket dresses, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, because I have three meters of each of them and the Jackie dress can be a little bit fabric hungry but three and a half meters is usually the safe spot but yeah so I am going to make the Jackie dresses again that was something I was like oh I could do that this way so no I can't because I, I sew those on my overlocker uh never mind it'll be fine so um yeah you know like we all go through changes in style and, and what we want to what to, want to make and want to wear as well I you know I I was I made what 17 18 of those scuba dresses because they were inexpensive because the scuba was what like five pounds to seven pounds per meter I needed three meters of it I mean I went through a bunch and I made um all the short ones because I was wearing short dresses um and my niece had ended up having all of those and then yeah I think it's one of those things where it's just like it's just they're just 
I've put them on and taken them straight back off again. Um, I might offer a few of them to mum because mum does enjoy and wear the couple that um, she has. The ones that she's made and the ones that I've made and then I've passed on to her. But yeah, I think I think they need to go. Um, Nimue says Charlie's dog is called Link and she says her dog's name a lot more than her own. That's probably where the L thing came from. Thank you, Nimue. <laughs> Uh, Darcy says, I found Charlie's favourite knit dress pattern. I don't sew much with knits, but learning new skills is good. Yes. No, I already have it. And I do like it. Um, so, yeah. So, Felicia says, hi, everyone. Now our daylight savings are over in New South Wales. I can get to catch part of this live. Hello. Chan Dash says, has Bianca done any more about writing and the other side hustles? If you are a Patreon, you will have had access to the first five chapters of her first novel. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to. I've downloaded it. I am excited. There might have been a certain tier that you needed to be on to get that. Um, but yes, she's still writing. But she is also deep in house hunting mode. I'm looking forward to reading it. It sounds like it's going to be the sort of thing that I would enjoy. Um, my only problem is that, as you guys know, I don't really read books anymore. I listen to them. I'm really listening to A Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I finished um, halfway through A Court of Mist and Fury at the moment. I'm enjoying them more the second time round. I listened to them the first time round because there was all that was, you know, like I fell down that part of the TikTok rabbit hole. TikTok's been very influential. I am very easily influenced person apparently. Um, getting distracted sorry um but yeah i listened to them the first time around and it's just like yeah it's okay second time around i'm listening to it a little bit more and you know it's still okay it's not like the best thing that i've ever read but i'm enjoying it and again listen to not read I really, really enjoyed the Green Rider series. There's one book left and it's not been written yet. And I'm just like, I do need it. I want it, give it to me. Okay, lining is done. I do need to sew on the facing. But I need to put some marks on that so that can go to the side to get pressed. Let's start sewing the body. Is 
the right side. That is the right side. So this is going to be a very plain one as well, but I kind of think that's maybe not the worst idea because I've worn my two patterned ones maybe like once each. Um, because they're patterned and, you know, I have to wear plain stuff with them because they're such large prints, but yeah. Um, Jessica says, no, you need a beaded snake brooch to go with your end thesis collection. Oh, a beaded snake brooch would be so cool. Elena says to Darcy, I'm planning to get that pattern when it's on sale somewhere in the EU um, in case the postage and taxes will kill me. That's Charlie's favourite one. Uh, Darcy says, Bianca makes beautiful beaded bits. Yes. Elena says, I want Charlie's grey dress, but a bit shorter because I'm tripping hazard in my skirts. <laughs> nice. Um, Darcy says, I like watching people make their art. I don't necessarily have art that I hang on to, I hang on my wall, i.e. wear myself, but um, I learn how to make new things in new ways. Yeah, agreed. And I really enjoy um, watching things, channels for that as well, because, oh my God, it's the right way around. I think I'm putting this This, this is such a subtle difference between the right and the wrong side of this fabric. That's the right side. I think I've got that. That's the wrong side. Yeah, that's better, right, okay. Okay, so that's the right side, so that goes to that one, right. Sorry, mental gymnastics there whilst I'm trying to work out if I'm pinning this the right sides together or not. I think I am. The, so, the difference is so subtle that it probably wouldn't notice, but yeah. Uh, Darcy says natural fiber is good during hot times. Yes, yes it is. Carol says it's so freeing to get to the stage in life where you can say this is me and have and have uh, not have to think so much and my style is quite different than yours. Yeah. I think that's the thing. It's like you, you guys are saying, you can take pleasure in watching other people create the things that they love and the things that they think are beautiful and you can find um like tips and tricks and stuff in there that you know like whilst you might not miss might not necessarily make exactly what you're seeing on screen you can apply to your own own things um for for example like i'm going to be attempting to draft my very own waistcoat pattern and i'm going to 100 percent be inspired by Bianca to do that because she was the one that gave me the push to finally go yeah you know what I need to make my slippers so yeah let's see Darcy says, I want Charlie's grey dress to wear when my husband is overheating and won't have the blankets on the bed. <laughs> it is an epic dress. I love those sleeves and I love the hood. 
again, I'm not sure that I would actually wear it. Maybe if it was in a print, I might feel more inclined to. I don't know. Nimoy says, I already owned Charlie's favourite dress pattern because of Sean. I made a short summary one a few years ago and have a double knit on the desk to make a pinnacle version. Might wait for autumn. Nice. Yeah, I do like that dress. Um, so Felicia says, 100%. I'm not one to wear dresses much, but enjoy watching your channel. I do plan to make a couple of dresses this year and in prints, which is something I didn't have a lot of. I also um, I also was a rosary apparel, watch a rosary apparel, and you're sewing. Yes, I am sewing. Darcy says, I had never heard of rosary before, but I like the channel banner, so I'm going to give her, I'm going to try her out. Awesome. Conchetta says, hi everyone, hope you're all well. Very well, thank you, how are you? Darcy says, I have been burned by authors who don't finish series too often in the past. I know, I can't imagine that Kristen Britton is not going to finish this series because the last book was released in 2022. So we're on track for another one. But then George R.R. R. Martin, what has it been, 14 bloody years since the last Game of Thrones book? The speculation that he actually did intend the books to end the way that the TV series did and the fact that everyone hated it so much has just given him a panic attack. But there's so many really good fan fiction ideas out there. It's like, dude, just take one of those and use that. Give credit, but, you know, like, there's, mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, Darcy says, hi to Conchetta. Conchetta says, I just found Charlie's channel. I've watched her process as she's figuring things out. Uh, Conchetta says to Darcy, hi there. And Darcy says, Bianca makes great tutorials for beaded brooches and you can easily create a snake. Yeah. And uh, Darcy says, more bearded bits is a good idea. And then it says, I have my yoke pattern and now I'm completely terrified to continue. You can do it. What's the worst that can happen? Um, don't use expensive fabric for the first time, but you can totally do it. Darcy says, Charlie's made a pattern version of the grey dress. The, the the turquoise and purple one. I love that one too. Hmm. I always think it's really interesting seeing different people's um, like takes on how to do things as well. Like I watched um, Rachel Maxey's video where she's like upcycled three um pieces of clothing this um last friday and it was really interesting hearing her take on patterns because she's just like you read a pattern and it's just like eh, eh, eh. And, you, and you don't understand it and she's gotten frustrated which is why she's not kind of gone down the pattern route too often but it was just really interesting kind of like hearing her thought process behind why she does things the way that she does Darcy says, fingers crossed. Nimoy says, professional authors have, have to avoid fan fiction like the plague because the legal consequences would be a nightmare, but the TV show development would be a huge writer's block for me. Oh, yeah. I can totally understand that. They'd have to bring somebody on as like a co-author or something, wouldn't they? If they went down one of their, one of their fan fiction routes, but Oh, he can't. He, oh. Yeah, I mean, there's so many characters that he's introduced that just were clearly pointless characters, and because he, he made such a big deal out of some of them in the book, and um, they were nowhere in the TV series. And that kind of, I, I mean, I, I appreciate that it has to happen and has happened for quite a lot of characters, but it's just the way that they were such a big deal about them made made in the books kind of thing. I don't know. He keeps writing other books and stuff, and it's like, dude, 
finish finish this one, please. I remember sitting in mum and dad's front garden just before I started at Playboy. I'd come down for the weekend with my then boyfriend. And we were sitting out in the sun. It was April, um, but it was really sunny to the point where I was out in the garden in a bikini with a cold beer, um, reading my book with a dog sat in my lap. I've got photos of it. Um, and I was just like, oh, yeah, okay, fine. This is going to be good. And then, you know, on schedule for another, another book in a couple of years' time. Do this. 14 years. And no. This is not acceptable, young man. I've got the correct needle in, but it's skipping stitches. Jitter says, actual sewing question. I made a dress with the most buttery soft knit. Feels amazing. However, once I cut into it, it rolled and rolled and rolled. If I had searched the pattern pieces after cutting, would sewing have been less of a battle? Um, so I don't very often sew knits on my sewing machine. I am today and I'm regretting it because it is skipping stitches. I'm going to have to go over that scene. Um, so I just sew on my overlocker. I don't pre-sew any of the seams unless I absolutely have to, or there's a precision point that you have to end like the gable top. Um, possibly it could have helped. I know that a lot of the viscose jerseys do that when I cut them out so that's another reason that I don't want to do them on here and I want to do them on my overlocker um, but yeah Darcy says he can't use the fanfic ask um, Gaiman you can't even read the fanfic without being accused of plagiarism by the fanfic community yeah no I can I can see that I can it's just that there's so many of the fan fiction ones that I've heard have got such good endings for this book and it's just like, you can't do it the way that you have. That was terrible. Yeah. Um, Elena says, I could end up not liking it. I could be too aware of my body image issues at the moment. This is to try to make me feel better before my birthday on the 17th. Right. True and true. True and very true. Um, but it's the same thing. I do the same thing. It's like I will 100% procrastinate and not make things because I'm like, but what, what if I don't like it? What if it doesn't kind of turn out like I, I imagine it? What if, what if, what if? And if you don't make it, you don't know. And you could be pleasantly surprised, but it could not go, it could not go right. So there is that as well. And if you know that you are having body image issues at the moment, then maybe go for a TNT if you have one or um, something that you know you're going to like the end result of. I appreciate that if you don't have TNTs, that's a bit more difficult. But, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one because... It's one of those things that it's 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 like my camisole that I've got back up. She's over there actually now um, that I've had cut out what for four years now and still not made up because in my head it's the perfect camisole. Schrodinger's camisole, you know, it's like in my head it's going to be the perfect thing. But if I don't make it up, it can still be the perfect thing as well as being a, tro a total mess. Um, but in its state as is, it could be both. Um, and then I don't know. So that's kind of a nice state to be in. <laughs> um, but also it means that you don't have the thing. So, yeah. 
Natalie says, Robert Jordan passed away before he finished The Wheel of Time, although it was finished by another author. Martin, better get a move on. Yes, I love The Wheel of Time series. Um, I, I actually quite like a lot of the Frank Herbert books that were written by his son, because I know he left like a load of notes and stuff. I know it goes off on some weird tangents, um, but I, I, I enjoyed those as well. Um, Brendan Sanderson, I want to say for Wheel of Time, wasn't it? I think I think it's one of those things that it's never going to be as um, as exact as if the original author had finished them in in entirety. But I would rather have an ending to a series than it being left up in the air. Oh, the Green Rider series better get finished. I think there's one more book. It might be two more books. I really, really hope that gets finished. Um, Congesta says, to be honest, the only reason I didn't do the fir- didn't do that first is I wasn't sure the dress would be would fit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, then yeah, you probably next time if you know it fits, then you probably won't have quite so much of a nightmare if you oh. Excuse me. Yeah, you probably won't have quite so much of a nightmare if you do get it done on the overlocker. Lisa says, hi, Sean. Hi, everyone. Natalie says, hi, Lisa. Nimoy says, fan fic authors accuse each other of plagiarism in the most ridiculous cases. And then it's a struggle to get actual copy paste plagiarism taken down from sites. Oh, wow. Lisa says, hi to Natalie. Uh, Darcy says to Natalie, I have read series finished by another author. It didn't really work for me. I can read the book and hear the changes in the voices of the characters. Oh, interesting. And Darcy says, hi to Lisa. Um, Conchetta says, and with the fanfic, the characters are usually the intellectual property of the author or publisher. Therefore, fanfic is a tricky area, tricky arena. Yeah. Natalie says, yes, uh, it was really hard to finish reading the series, but I'm not a fan of Brendan Sanderson's writing. Ah, uh, see, I liked his um, Mistborn series, wasn't it? I liked those series and his take on and on that kind of magic thing. Um, Nimoy says, come into fanfic, we have cookies. <laughs> or as Adam Savage says, I reject your reality and substitute my own. That's basically our motto. <laughs> nice. Caroline says, Dragon Rider books are now Anne McCaffrey's son write. Um, I love Anne McCaffrey's books. I don't think I've read any of them written by her son. I might have read one or two. I've definitely not read the entire series as it stands now. Uh, Darcy says, Nimue, I enjoy fanfic immensely, but I understand the importance of, of the distance between. Lisa says, hi to Darcy. Darcy says, I only read the first book of the, read the first book of Wheel of Time and Anne, Anne McCaffrey, I could tell when she stopped working. Oh, interesting. So yeah, like I said, I don't think I've read any of the books written by her son. I have read so many Anne McCaffrey series as well, like the Crystal Singer, the Petterby series, um, Catalyst, uh, oh, the Tower one with the uh, with the base on Callisto. Um, A lot, so obviously the dragon books as well. But I think I can't remember which of the last dragon books that I read, but I really enjoyed the Anne McCaffrey ones. Tower and the Hive, thank you, Caroline. I enjoyed those ones as well. Elena says the worst in some book series are the series that are finished, and it's in and it's a popular series, so the author gets an idea to continue it by adding spin-offs. Um, books on side characters after the official ending. Yeah, that's what Kristen Britton's done with some of the characters in the Green Rider series, with some novellas about them. And I'm just like, I kind of just want to know what, how this story ends. 
but I also understand that you know like sometimes authors need a break like the um Stephen King Dark Tower series I love that series I do not like Stephen King books um but the Dark Tower series I absolutely loved that and he started writing that when he was what 17 18 and it was one of those things where he was just like I can't he had you know he had letters from people being like oh how does this series end please tell me I need to know um you know like I'm dying of cancer I need to know how the book ends and he's just like I genuinely don't know this is one of those books that I write it when the ideas come to me and it's taken him what 30 years to finish it but I understand now that he started adding books in, even though the series is finally finished. I love that series so much. The movie was terrible. They tried to put seven years, seven books into one movie. No. What is wrong with this machine? Maybe I need to change the needle over. Skipping stitches. You can go away with it. I am going to get away with it. I think I'm going to change the needle though because it does not seem happy with this one. The skip stitches are far enough apart that I'm 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 kind of getting away with it. So I am just gonna change this over. I need to buy some more jersey needles. Who started what? Ah, open that up there. Who started watching the Fallout series? Who's been watching Halo series? And who's been watching Fallout? Because I've watched the first episode. I'm really enjoying it. And usually, adaptations from movie uh, from video games to movies don't tend to be that great, but. Halo was amazing and so far I am enjoying Fallout I've never played the game I've watched the game be played but I've never played the game myself I'm waffling at you for an hour and a half. Okay, so I need to sew. Uh, Darcy says the tower and the hive is one of my favorites as well because Jesse says I love the dark tower series F perfect ending I actually threw the book across the room looked at my husband and said uh, it was perfect yeah it really was it was so good <laughs> I love that he features himself as a character as well it's like that's a proper fever dream and, and I love that he explains why spiders feature so frequently in his ter more terrifying things as well. It was it was like a really interesting insight into the man's mind. It's another one of my theories that it's a really good 
thing that certain authors become authors because otherwise, you know, they have all this stuff in their head. Like they've got the makings of serial, I mean, tongue in cheek, they've got the total makings of serial killers if they didn't actually get to write this stuff down. It's like, that's in that lives in their head. It's got to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Elena says, and some of the characters were killed, moved, uh, disappeared somewhere in the first seconds, the second of books of, but in, in the first or second book of 10 books. Oh, words are hard. I can, I can read. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry, Elena's talking about when they uh, authors do spin off books for characters that, yeah, um, were, you know, killed off quite as soon and things like that. Yeah. Marie is here. Morning, everyone. I'm just listening to the thread and love a fantasy book. I'm currently reading Dark Blade series. I'm loving it. Ooh, interesting. Darcy says, just picked up a new author. It's a horror book. Not for me. Natalie says, well, in my opinion, the ending of the Dark Terror series was kind of disappointing and I love it. Oh, I really enjoyed it because so many of my favourite, favourite, like uh, Peter F. Hamilton, he has this thing where he does kind of the same thing where it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds into this thing where it's just like, how is anyone going to win at this point? And then the same kind, he uses the same kind of like... Um, story mechanics or story device to to kind of do the same thing that Stephen King did um yeah I I I kind of thought it was I kind I, I thought it was perfect as well along with Elena on that one <laughs> um Jojo says fanfic can get terrifying there was multiple murders in Japan at anime studio of supposed plagiarism oh gosh Conchetta says, I actually listened to the wind through the keyhole. Stephen King read it. It was cool to hear in his voice. It was almost like hearing the characters the way he heard them when he wrote it. It's a story Roland tells the group when they are waiting at the storm. Oh, okay. I haven't read that one. Because I haven't read any of the ancillary books to that series. I've just read the, I think it's seven, isn't it? Seven books. So, yeah. Um, Jojo says you don't like Stephen King what lol you can go off people you know I'm so sorry but no Stephen King absolutely not and I have no idea why I picked up the gunslinger given that I don't like Stephen King books I think maybe my cousin recommended it to me possibly and it was a really short one so I was just like okay I can give this a go because you know what's the worst that could happen and it's not I mean, it's horrific in places, incredibly violent and very detailedly, graphically horrific in, in certain places, this book. It's not like it's, you know, but I can cope with that better than I can cope with suspense and horror. I don't like that genre. Um, having said that, I've never read any of his horror books. <coughs> but one of my, you know, first horror movies I ever watched was It. The original Tim Curry one. And I'm so glad that I didn't realise Pennywise was Tim Curry because I think I would have not watched a lot of Tim Curry's things, other things as well. But yeah, it was it in Pet Cemetery, And it's just like, no, they're not for me. They, I don't like them. I don't like them. So, yeah, sorry. You want to want to cancel your um, plans for October now? <laughs> Darcy says, Lisa, reading is a good idea for processing emotions, my therapist says. And Marie says, oh, I'm off on one now about The Magician by Raymond E. Feist. It's a brilliant series. Oh, okay, cool. There is a um, book thread on the Peeps group, so please do add to this. Darcy says, I don't read books people haven't recommended. It's an autistic thing for me. I like rereading -re certain books as well. That's why I'm like doing the Akatar series again, because I've read it once and I, it was a recommendation from like a bunch of people and it sounded like the kind of thing that I would like and it was just one of those things where it's just like okay cool I can do I can I can cope with this I can cope with this but yeah I I like having recommendations as well and comfort reading and rereading things like I I will listen to Georgette Hare and Harry Potter and uh Rick Riordan's books um over and over and over again because it's it's a comfort thing 
Um, Elena says, I'm currently watching British series Hustle from 2007. That rings bells, but I don't think I've watched that one. Lisa says to Darcy, I read, usually read bios and historical stuff, but Millie Johnson writes pure, easy reading fiction. Get immersed in the stories. It's like having a break from my grief. Um, yeah, re I, I love the quote that, you know, I've lived a thousand lives. I've loved a thousand loves. Um, I've traveled the world and all because I read. I love that quote. I, I know I've not done it well, but yeah, that one. So Felicia says, night all off to sleep, watch later. Uh, I'm not going to be, uh, we're nearly done, Felicia, Felicia, but thank you very much for coming. Darcy says, I've read um, some advice. I enjoyed it. Aaron says, don't forget to like the video. Yes, please. There's 63 of us and 25 likes. Darcy says, night to Felicia. Uh, Natalie says, I used to love Feist. Haven't read his books since the 90s. Nostalgia attack, lol. Sean, you might like The Eye of the Dragon by King. It's a fantasy novel. Ooh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Darcy says, I'm waiting for Fallout to finish being released so I can binge it. I thought it was all released. Or is it in two parts? I thought there was all, all episodes were out. Um, I'm waiting for the new Star Trek Di Discovery to be completely released so I can binge that because it's only two episodes at the moment and I'm it's taking all of my self control to not watch those. Conchetta says, I love Stephen King and have never watched or read it. Scary Clowns, no thank you. No matter how much I love Tim, Tim Curry, can't do it. Same, it, it no, just no. Stephen, watching that it just ruined it for me. Rachel Lynn says, Good morning, all good morning. Conchetta says, I'm currently listening to Andy Serkis read The Hobbit. I've read it before, but his reading in each character's voice is not only amazing, it's really comforting and heartwarming. I have never read Tolkien. I've watched the movies. I've never read Tolkien. I did try. And it was weirdly, my brother doesn't read very much, but he has read um, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Um, and the, the similar, oh, there's a bunch of them. He's read them all. Um, and I tried, I borrowed his copy, but the beginning of the book was just so much like backstory and, and like addendums and stuff. And it was just like, when is the story actually starting? Um, so maybe getting it to listen to might be the way of making it work for me. Because I would love to read The Hobbit. Read. Um, yeah, no, I've never actually read any Tolkien I just couldn't. I tried and I couldn't get into it. But yeah. Um, Natalie says he has a new series at the moment and Pug appeared in the last chapter and I'm waiting for a new book to come out in the summer. Uh, Lisa says, Sean, when my daughter was little, she said she wished she could read. I told her that through reading, I have been all over the world and never left my armchair. She's 35 now, 35 now, avid reader. Yeah. Yes. Natalie says, ooh, exciting. I haven't read much lately, but we'll check it out. And Rachel then says, Marie, that's the Feist book I'm on now. Oh, yes, please, please do go, because I will forget. So please do add your book recommendations to, I think it's pinned in the Peeps group. But yeah, I would love to hear what you guys are reading, because I'm always looking for new things to read. Although uh, Christopher Paralini has released another one, the Arrogant series. I just love those books as well. I have all of those in hard copy. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Caroline says, my son was told he was odd because boys don't read girl. Oh, gosh. Yeah, no, that's that's just daft. That's just daft. No. But, yeah, there was there was the only book my brother, like, ever read. I've been trying to get him to read some Peter F. Hamilton because I think he'll really enjoy it, but he's just not much of a reader. He, he prefers playing video games. And to be fair, to be fair, if I had a console then I probably would as well. I think oh, I would love a PS5. I think once I have replaced my computer, that would be the next thing that I save up for, PS5. By then it will probably be a PS6 or 8, <laughs> given how much computer costs. But, yeah, that's what I would like to do. Um, Nimoy says, Tolkien's world building is amazing, but his exposition is off its time and difficult for many modern readers. Lord of the Rings, he was also something by the word and couldn't and couldn't be edited it shows was paid by the word and couldn't be edited it shows <laughs> interesting I didn't know that that's really cool um guys it's been really fun hanging out with you lot I have done some sewing I'm going to get the um 
ride your bomber jacket finished today and then i'm going to start working on my um gala dinner dress because i would like to get that finished and um not be stressing about that because the next project i need to work on is the bag so that i have an inside and outside to show people and then i'm gonna work my way through this section of the stash i would like to do this one but i need to buy some cotton more lining for this one because it is ever so slightly see-through and i don't want to line it with viscose because that just wouldn't be right so i need to get some cotton more for that one um, so yeah, this this section of the stash is what I'm going to work on next. Um, and then I think May is going to be blue month because I will have done. So these are my leftover knits, which I need to work out a project for. And I think I know what I want to try and do. Um, but again, in my own locker. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I probably will try and do the PDF pattern and pattern storage for Wednesday's video. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, that is a good idea. Um, and it is a video that's on my thing of do, to do and it doesn't it, it's it's a fairly chatty one and it does need some b-roll but it's not going to be too difficult to to actually do and then I need to work out what I want to do for next week because yeah uh again it was going to be a practical video but it was going to be a practical video about knits and I can't do that so maybe the waistcoat video because Nicola's coming over on Friday to film next week so we were going to be doing mum's colours, um, but mum's got an allergic reaction at the moment, so she doesn't really want to be on camera, which is totally understandable. So, yeah, maybe we'll do the waistcoat video. Well, at least start the waistcoat video, because if we do that on Friday, then I've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday to make the waistcoat, and then not don't take that long to make. And then... Tuesday to film, Wednesday to edit. And then after that, it's uh, everything I made. It's a lookbook and then my plans. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. So yes, it will be pattern storage. And I will probably do my pattern storage for paper and PDF because they're kind of intertwined with each other. Um, so yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I think that's what I'll do. Um, Lisa says, a really funny book is The Queen and I by Sue Townsend. I have reread it so many times, very funny. Uh, thank you for the recommendation. Jodia says, I've got the circus version of Lord of the Rings on Audible, love it. I haven't picked up The Hobbit yet. Mum used to read it to me and my late brother when we were kids, loved it. Natalie says, have a good week, everyone. Yes, you too. Nimoy says, I wouldn't mind more company, but I'm also out of tea. Have a lovely week, everyone. Anka says, have a wonderful day and week, everyone. Conchetta says, have a wonderful week, everyone. Jojo says, have a lovely week, everyone. Darcy says, just finished listening to Combating Cult Mind Control by Dr. Stephen Hassan. It was illuminating. Lisa says, take care, everyone. Have a lovely week. Sending love and light to all you all. Darcy says, ta-ta for now. Great week, everyone. Elena says, have a nice week and see you soon. And Box says, have a nice weekend. Well, yes, you too. Thank you very much for joining me today. And I know I didn't put it up last night, but I decided this morning, last minute to do this. And it was really fun to see you all again. So I will see you next week for the things that I've just mentioned. And I will see you next Sunday for another live hangouts. Bye.